Hello and welcome to Starbase Summary, October 19th to the 21st, 2025. I'm Jack Beyer. I will be your host for this episode, although you can change the audio down there below the timeline if you just want ambient or another language like Dutch or Spanish. Looks like they're removing the ship pins from the chopsticks on pad one there, starting off with the demo work, wasting no time. Speaking of wasting no time, SpaceX installing the boom on the tower crane, or at least one of them, there at the launch site. And hey, look, it's that air separation unit, not the one at the launch site, but the other new one being built by Lind over in Brownsville. It's actually like over kind of on the other side of Brownsville, but we've been keeping an eye on this thing. It has been going up rapidly and uh, will be supplying SpaceX, I do believe. So very interesting to see additional infrastructure get built in Starbase to support Starship. Well, Brownsville, I guess. Speaking of infrastructure in Starbase, you can see a lot of those concrete barriers on various sides of Highway 4 here on this drive-in. They are steadily adding in additional lanes. It's going to be a four-lane highway. I thought it was going to be concrete, but they've started uh, with asphalt for whatever reason. Look, more cyber trucks being delivered, as if they did not already have enough. Still seeing car carriers arriving with more cyber trucks and more pieces of the uh, apartment complex and parking garage there as well, that prefabbed concrete. There's the CP-11 and rover cam and ring yard and mega bays. You can see the boom was on that tower crane. This gives you a nice sense of scale for the Star Factory and office building, which we are now passing on the left. We have Boca Chica Village on the left, as well as this used to be the old tracking station. Now it's more village and parking as well. And there is the Flaps restaurant, the old Starlink building. And, of course, the final stretch into the launch site. We just passed our highway site. You can see the new sidewalk. There's the new entrance to the launch site. There's Starhopper. Always fun to do a drive in. I think we might do a full-length version of this drive with commentary for members. So if you're a member, keep your eyes open for that in the near future. Just to sort of talk about what it's like to do the drive into Starbase. Putting some paint up on the wall on the right there. You can see the Starbase air separation unit, the foundations of it, just beginning to form there on the left side. You can see all the construction related to that around the roundabout there. Whee! Roundabout. And we'll head on to the beach so you can see what that's like. Sometimes it's benign and you can do it with the two-wheel drive, uh, you know, front-wheel drive sedan kind of thing. Sometimes it's a little chunky like this. Oh. And you need, uh, need four-wheel drive. Be careful if you're ever in Starbase and wanting to drive on the beach. Launch site does not look like this anymore because, as you can see, there's all that heavy equipment right there by the berm. This is the day that they had just started to demolish the berm. That progress well underway now. So, alas, you know, nothing is, uh, nothing is permanent in life. And especially not in Starbase. Ship 39's nose cone moved over to a different workstation in Mega Bay 2 in preparation for the rollout of its forward dome section. You can already see the straps there suspended below that nose cone and payload section. Pretty neat. Uh, always cool to see version 3 vehicles getting closer and closer to being complete. And this is another step for Ship 39. Cool night shots from Caesar of the Tower Crane. Very neat. Excited to see these things start lifting big old honking chunks of the Gigabay. Uh, I'm I'm sort of uh, it's sort of bittersweet because those views of Ship 39 we just had. We might not have for much longer, given that these tower cranes are going to start lifting large sections of wall that will obscure that view. So who knows when it comes time to stack Ship 40 and they're lifting its nose cone, we, not, we might not be able to see it. Some good concrete action happening. Do we get any smoothing, though? That's what I want to know. The concrete smoothing as well. Oh, maybe that guy on the right is kind of... Oh, okay. Yep, we're smoothing it. Nice. There's a whole separate... If you go back and look at the drive-in, they've built a whole separate concrete plant over by the port connector road where all of these concrete trucks are coming from so they don't have to make the whole entire drive they can just make mm, part of the drive 
back and forth from that new concrete plant. Pretty nifty. Pad 2, ship QD arm. Still hasn't been moved, at least that we can tell, or rolled to the launch site. Obviously, it's sitting here at Sanchez still, but looks like some more piping has steadily been added. And hopefully we see this thing added to Tower 2 here soon, so they can start launching version 3 ships. Or at least testing them. Ship 40's nose cone, having received a whole bunch of tiles. Always good to see the production line progressing. I always wonder, like, oh nice, human for scale. I always wonder if these lanes, like 11R, is 11R, does that extend away from the camera into the factory? So, technically, what we think of as the nose cone hall, does it, it's not actually this horizontal section in front of the window, or is it a series of vertical columns that we're seeing end here? I would love to know the, <laughs> the production flow and layout of the Star Factory, because it definitely seems like the nose cones start over here on this side. This is to the right of Ship 40's nose cone as we were just looking at it. Um, and this is even further to the right of that. So from our perspective, it sort of looks like the nose cones progress linearly down the hallway as seen from the windows. But, but those columns, they're labeled almost like lanes that go the opposite way, like perpendicular to that. Anyways, pad two looking good at night. A whole bunch of vents are on this pad structure, which is really interesting because when it comes alive during testing or launch, we will see it presumably getting all misty and foggy and it's it's going to look like the mount itself is alive, which is really going to be neat. Got some blinky going on, blinky action at the orbital tank farm. Very cool. Orbital pad one at night. It's going to be interesting to see what this thing turns into. Thirty-nine sections lifted for stacking. A lot of people asking about those ports there below the payload bay door. I think those are to facilitate docking. I don't know that they're propellant transfer ports. I think they're docking ports because, you know, they're above the tankage. So you can see that it is the forward dome as well. Looking really good and really clean. SpaceX doing this interesting, like, lift with a lift methodology that I don't know that we've seen in a while. I remember them doing this with, like, oh, I want to say 37... Or 36. But it's been a while. And like I was saying a moment ago, we might not see something like this again. So, soak it in. That heat shield, though, it's looking real good. I cannot wait to see this ship fully stacked. It's going to look awesome. <laughs> As I said, they wasted no time demolishing the launch site berm that protects the orbital tank farm. You can see... This uh, pneumatic drill jackhammer thing. I don't know what the actual appropriate pneumatic hammer. Uh, if you know in the comments, tell me. But yeah, you can see they're just punching holes in it and pulling chunks away like it's nothing. So be ready. Be ready for Starbase's launch site to look much different pretty soon. It's, it's not going to shock me when they start lifting that orbital launch mount off of uh, the legs, tearing down the legs, digging the trench, you know, the whole nine yards. Like I said, nothing in life is permanent, much less in Starbase. Something, something, gateway to Mars sign. <laughs> wow, this is a cool time lapse. They really went at it. Went out the other day and shot Sunrise. Small homage to Mary doing the same. Don't often get out at Sunrise. Not always easy to do. Props to her for always doing that. Quick little sunrise there at the pads for you as we get ready for the landscape to change dramatically. Cruise at the locks BQD. Great human for scale action there. Remember, pad 2 has two BQDs, one for liquid oxygen and one for methane. So this is the one for liquid oxygen. What are they? Are they taking scaffolding down? I can't quite. Oh, yeah, they are. Look at that. Looks like some scaffolding is coming down. Excellent. One step closer to testing. Man, this pad is gonna be awesome. Not that Orbital Pad 1 wasn't. I don't want to hurt your feelings, Orbital Pad 1. You were epic. You were legendary. You were iconic. But, you know, you were the first version. I'm excited for version 2 of Stage 0. Manufacturing Jig. 
Looks like it's in the star factory. Might be part of the setup they use to weld on the nose cones. It looks like maybe the those three poles right there would hold the header tank assemblies. We might be about to see a new nose cone sleeved on its header tank. And that might be Ship 45's nose cone? Neat. Looks like somebody up there on a lift checking a weld or welding. Doesn't look like they have a welding helmet, so maybe they're doing some diagnostics. And that could very well be Ship 46's nose cone, and that could be why we saw that that rig earlier because they're going to put a header tank on that rig and then lift this on top of that we'll see in the next starbase summary and actually you might get das back in the next one i do believe his vacation is uh slowly but surely coming to an end so thank you to everybody for helping out to make this happen thomas caesar gage kevin dan the whole crew and we'll see you on the next one